Hello everyone, in this video I will teach you how to create a snake game using only Java code step by step. So if you want to learn how to create a game that is currently on the screen, stay with me and let's get started. You can find the code on GitHub, the link is in the description of the video, and I encourage you to download the code and follow along and then after to try to recreate it or add something new so you fully understand what's going on. Let's start with the rectangle class. As you can see, we have a public class rectangle and it has its position on the screen. So we have a 2D screen and we can have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. And each rectangle has a X and Y coordinate. And then in here we have some constants which are rectangle width and height. You can change that if you want the snake to be bigger. And then we can create a rectangle with this constructor, which basically we just set its position. So if we say new rectangle at position 5050, it will be drawn on the screen with x and y coordinates equal to 50. And then our snake will actually be a collection of these rectangles, which will be moving across the screen, as you will see later. Another important thing, so two rectangles can intersect and if they are intersecting that means that we have collision, meaning we lost the game, so we either hit the wall or we hit our tail and we lose, or we hit an apple and we get a point in the game. And down here we have get position x and get position y and set position x and set position y. So we'll use these for moving the objects across the screen and we'll use this to access current position. So we know if we hit another object. And that is our rectangle class and our apple will actually also be a rectangle and our snake will be a collection of rectangles which will be moving across the screen. So let's go to another class and in here we have our apple class and it is similar to a rectangle because we have its position, we have the position of the apple. We also have a reference to the snake. Uh, I will explain that later why we need that. In here we also have so we can get the position and when we create the apple we can set the position. And once we set it, we don't want to change it until we eat the apple. And once we eat the apple, we just create a new one, as you can see here. And if, you, if this confuses you, basically we use a timer task. So I will show it later in main, but every three seconds, if the apple is null, we want to attach a new apple to our snake and then draw it on the screen. So basically every three seconds we are drawing a new apple on the screen and that's pretty much it from the apple. It's pretty simple. You just put something on the screen and every three seconds we have a thread that is checking every three seconds if the apple is null and if it's null we just create a new apple. Our screen will be 500 by 500 so we just generate a number in between 500 in x direction and 500 in y direction and draw the apple on the screen. And now we come to our snake class and it extends j panel because we'll be drawing this object to the screen. And in our main we will have a j frame which will be used as a container on which we will draw this snake. So First we define a background color, basically all the drawing is happening in here, we will get to that later, but first let's go of the logic uh, from this class. So as I said, our snake will actually be a collection of rect rectangles, as you can see. So this is the body of our snake, our snake also has a direction in which it moves and we will have an apple, as I explained later, so we'll be attaching an apple to our snake so all the drawing is happening at the same time. We'll also have a reference to our main window so we can close it after this, but this doesn't really matter uh, without this step. And so once we create a snake, uh, I'm just passing the reference because actually we're calling the snake from main. As you can see, we'll, we 
first when we start our main we want to create our snake so we're just passing this window but you can all you can ignore this step so i only passed it so we can gracefully close the window but the main idea is here so we create a new array list we add three body parts in here and we set the direction of the snake to be right. So if I start the game, you can see that we have three body parts and let me put it back. You can see that we have three body parts and that the first direction is right. So that is this part. After that, so once the user presses the key, we want to set the direction uh, to left, to up or down. And another thing we need to get the direction of course and another thing that is important is adding parts so basically we just want to add a new rectangle to the last after the last element so we get the last element and we if we're moving right we want to add it to the left so we have this minus if we are moving to the left, we, on, we want to add it to the right because the right is the end. So if our snake is moving to the left, our tail is at the right side. So we take this last, we take that position and we just add 25 to the right or to the left. And same logic goes for up and down. So uh, another important thing, so our game, you, you could now see this part because in check collision we take the head so the first piece of the snake and if that piece of snake is hitting our tail we want to stop the game so we go from one we don't go from zero because this is zero we go from one and we check all the body parts with our intersect method which we wrote in rectangle as you can see here it's a pretty simple method and if that is true, we want to end the game. So basically, um, we just print you lose in here. And we set the main window. That's why I took the reference from the main window. We set it to not be visible. You can see if I set it to true and run the game. So you can see now if I collect this apple and I hit myself in the tail, the screen stays on. And if we set this to false, the screen disappears. We have this, basically it's a button that displays our score. And once you click OK, we, dis we destroy this window and we exit the application. So that's our check collision and basically if we hit the apple, so if our apple is not null and we intersect the apple, we want to add a part and we want to set apple to null. So if this is null, we will create a new apple. Another important thing is moving the snake. So basically we create a new array in which we will store the new position of the snake. We take the first which is basically the head and we create um, this new rectangle as the old position and then we move that so we set the position equal to speed our speed is 25 which means our head will move for 25 if we are going right we'll go to the right if we're going left we'll go to the left so you see the logic we move the head and then we add that head to our new list and we traverse the old list we have the previous and the new basically our new rectangle will go to the position of the previous rectangle you can see the animation on the screen right now and then we add them to our new list and our new list becomes the body of the snake and then we check collision so once we move the snake we check the collision if we lost the game or collected an apple and now comes the graphics part which is basically really simple we in this draw snake so basically this method over here which we got from our j panel that's why i said the j panel is important this new method gets called 
from main. And in here, as you can see, timer for redrawing the screen every 150 milliseconds, we redraw the screen and this method gets called. And what this method does, it basically, it redraw the screen. So we set the background. First, you have to call this, then you set, you have to call this, then you do whatever you want. So first we set the background and then we draw the snake. And basically what we do in drawing the snake, we move the snake. So every 150 milliseconds, we move the snake and then we just draw the rectangles. So first we need to create a graphics 2D object. Then we, if the apple is not null, we draw a rectangle with apple position. That's why we have these positions and width and height of a rectangle. And we fill it with color red. And then just for each rectangle in our body, we also draw, but with color blue, we draw our snake. And that's basically it for our snake. Those are all the parts of the snake you need. And now we need to connect all of that in our main. So our main class extends JFrame and this part over here is the JFrame part. So we set the title, we set the size, we add the key listener so we can track the keyboard and we attach it to our main and we set visible to true, set resizable to false and default close operation. So this is classic JFrame stuff. And the first thing we do when we create our main object, so this is our constructor, we create a snake. Why do we create a snake? So we need to keep a reference of this snake, save it over here. So once we press some keys, once we press some keys, so when we press the key, we want to access that snake and change the direction. So you can see if we press the right arrows, we get the key code and then 39 equals to right arrow. And if we press right arrow and the current direction is not left, so because we cannot go, if we're going left, we cannot go right because we'll collide with, with our snake. And if it's not equal to left and we are pressing the right arrow, so we set the direction to right and uh, analog for all the others. And that's why we need this snake reference saved over here so we can access it. And yeah, we create a snake. We create a timer for redrawing the screen. So this timer and this timer are not the same. As you can see, this timer is from java.util. This is basically just creating a scheduled task of drawing an apple. And this timer, as you can see, once I press it and we check the documentation, this timer is from Java AWT event action listener. Every 150 milliseconds, we shoot, let's say like that, we shoot an action listener and we redraw the screen because as you can see, we have our action performed. So every 150 milliseconds, this method gets called and we repaint everything that's on the screen. And then this gets called because we are redrawing. So this in snake, this gets called. Then this method calls draw snake, which calls move snake. Basically every 150 milliseconds that is going on. And in here, every 3000 milliseconds, that's three seconds, we try to create an apple in here. So that's just a separate thread. And we create a window and that's basically it. That's all we do. And then we start our task like this. So again, you start a new thread. This is a multi-thread system because a lot of things must happen at the same time, independent of each other. And now when we run the game, we can see all of that in action. As you can see, the apple is not redrawing because it is not null. Once we collect it, in the next three seconds, it will appear on the screen, as you can see. So if we don't collect it, it will stay in the same place. And once we collect it, we basically destroy the old object and create a new one, which gets uh, repainted in the next three seconds, because that, that is a thread running. And the only job it does, it is checks for the apple. And we can move the snake, as you can see, 
and once we hit the tail we lose and your score is 9 because we collected 9 parts and once you press OK the application closes. Thank you for sticking to the end. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. You can find this code for free on my GitHub. The link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.